A ten-year-old boy, Jojo's imaginary companion is Adolf Hitler himself, while his struggle with shoe tying remains unchanged. He's deeply entrenched in nationalist fervor and Nazi indoctrination, leading him to enlist in the Young Folk, the Hitler Youth's junior division, alongside his friend Yorkie. The duo spends a weekend at a camp overseen by Captain Clem and his second-in-command, Freddy Finkleel, along with Freudina Rum, who oversees the League of German Girls. The kids receive downsized uniforms and a ceremonial dagger before engaging in activities like grenade tossing, trench digging, map reading, and gas defense. Jojo excels in tasks involving depicting Jewish individuals and burning literature, yet his courage falters during hand-to-hand -hand combat. This prompts older boys to notice his fear, and during the moment to learn about taking a life, they present him with a rabbit, urging him to demonstrate. Despite Jojo's insistence that he isn't scared, he can't bring himself to harm the creature. When he attempts to release the rabbit, an older boy seizes and dispatches it, mocking Jojo. This incident leads to the moniker Jojo Rabbit, reflecting his perceived timidity. Upset, Jojo flees to the forest where his imaginary Hitler offers solace, comparing him to courageous rabbits. Reinvigorated, Jojo returns to camp where kids are being taught grenade throwing under Clem's supervision, including his dwarf assistant. Jojo rushes past him, swiftly snatches the grenades from his grasp, and dashes into the woods. He haphazardly throws the grenades, resulting in one bouncing off a tree and landing at his feet, causing a detonation that leaves him unconscious. He vaguely recalls being transported to the hospital and his mother, Rosie Betzler, visiting him. Upon awakening days later in his room, he immediately notices a limp in his leg as he rises from the bed. Gazing into the mirror, he discovers the scars on his face. Rosie enters to check on him, offering a comforting embrace and a reminder of her presence despite his father's absence and his sister Inga's passing. After helping Jojo don his uniform once more, Rosie accompanies him to the young folk headquarters. They encounter Klensdorf clumsily tending to Finkel while Rosie reprimands him for his negligence with a swift knee to the groin and a glove-aided slap, extracting a promise that Jojo will be assigned tasks even if they don't involve field work, ensuring his inclusion. Jojo assumes responsibilities like disseminating propaganda posters and delivering conscriptions with great zeal. One afternoon, he finds his mother gazing at a group of people hanging from a gallows in the town square. When Jojo inquires about their transgressions, she cryptically replies, what they could. Later, upon returning home, he discovers his mother absent and becomes apprehensive upon hearing noises from his sister's room. Investigating, he spots an unusual mark on the floor extending up the wall. Probing with his knife, he unveils a concealed section of the wall revealing a hidden compartment. Inside, he's startled to encounter a young girl named Elsa Kvor, who follows him out as he flees the room in terror. Just before he reaches the front door, she apprehends him, demonstrating her possession of his dagger and confessing her Jewish identity. Elsa explains she's there under Rosie's invitation, seeking refuge in their house. If Jojo divulges Elsa's presence to anyone, she pledges to assert that both he and Rosie aided her, a revelation that could endanger their lives. With his knife in her possession, Elsa retreats to her hiding spot. Jojo hurries to his room, engaging in a dialogue with his imaginary Hitler to deliberate his options. They ultimately decide that negotiation is the best course of action. Armed with a kitchen knife and a pot for protection, Jojo ventures back to his sister's room. There, he advises Elsa to seek an alternative place to stay. Surprisingly, she seizes the kitchen knife from him and dismisses him from the room. Following another consultation with imaginary Hitler, Jojo concludes that earning Elsa's trust is vital to lowering her guard. In the evening, upon Rosie's return, Jojo informs her of hearing noises upstairs. Rosie attributes the sounds to rats. Later, after tucking Jojo into bed, she visits Elsa and implores her to exercise greater caution. Rosie emphasizes that she cannot prioritize Elsa over her own son, reminding her that as long as even a single person survives, their cause remains unfinished. The following day, Jojo heads to the swimming pool, aiming to aid his leg's recovery. At the pool, he observes cleansed North and Finkel seated closely, displaying apprehension towards Rosie. Once Rosie departs, Jojo approaches them, questioning Clens North about the protocol for encountering a Jewish person. The response is to alert the Gestapo, who would eliminate the individual and their accomplices. Jojo further ponders how to recognize a Jewish person, prompting Clens North to admit his uncertainty, suggesting that someone should compose a guide. 
Upon returning home, Jojo resumes his attempt to communicate with Elsa. Recognizing their mutual predicament, he proposes a compromise. He will permit her to remain in exchange for information. Regarding Jewish individuals, Jojo aims to compile information for an expose book. Elsa agrees and elaborates, likening her people to him. However, sensing his skepticism, she jests that they are money-oriented demons with food allergies, a ruse to entice Jojo into bringing her sustenance. Recognizing her ploy, Jojo quickly catches on. As he delves into discussing the superiority of the Aryan race and the supposed weakness of Jewish people, Elsa seizes him, muffles his words, and shakes him. She asserts the strength of Jewish people before retreating to her hiding spot. Upon Rosie's evening return, she kindles a fire in the fireplace, pours wine, and plays music. Her jubilation stems from the Allies' capture of Italy with hopes for France's liberation. Jojo engages in a heated debate, criticizing Rosie for her stance against their country. She curtails the conversation and instructs him to eat. Suspicious of Rosie's motives, Jojo deduces she's withholding food for Elsa. Opting for leftovers, he ponders his father's hypothetical understanding. Rosie dons her husband's jacket and employs Ash as a makeshift beard to admonish Jojo for disrespecting his mother. Using her husband's voice, she implores him to care for her as she's doing her utmost. Rosie cranks up the music, coaxing Jojo into dancing with her. The subsequent day, Jojo supplies Elsa with paper and a pencil, urging her to depict locations pertinent to Jewish individuals and their habits. Elsa obliges but refrains from addressing queries about her family. She does, however, share details about her fiancé Nathan, who is engaged in resistance efforts away from home. She sketches a picture for Jojo, humorously representing his own head as the metaphorical dwelling of Jewish people. Jojo concocts a plan, crafting a letter posing as Nathan, falsely ending their engagement. Reading it aloud to Elsa, she remains unconvinced yet visibly hurt by the cruel contents attached to her fiancé's name. Disturbed by her emotional state, Jojo experiences regret and composes a new letter as Nathan, retracting the falsehoods and professing continued love. Grateful, Elsa requests more letters from Jojo in the future. They engage in a challenge to name notable figures from their respective sides, with Elsa emerging victorious by invoking the name of Jesus. Sometime later, Jojo and Rosie embark on a stroll to the riverbank. Rosie reflects on the area's transformed state, recounting its past, as a lively gathering place for dancing and romance, notions Jojo dismisses. Rosie also asserts that children shouldn't be preoccupied with politics, but instead should indulge in play and tree climbing. She envisions a world where dancing symbolizes freedom. Jojo's skepticism leads him to abruptly pedal away on his bike, closely trailed by Rosie. At the roadside, they encounter returning soldiers in a despondent state, mirroring Jojo's own downcast mood upon returning home. Elsa attempts to uplift Jojo's spirits by weaving imaginative tales about her people. Gradually, Jojo warms to her company, which imaginary Hitler chastises him for later. As Jojo drifts into sleep, Rosie spends time conversing with Elsa, expressing her gratitude and satisfaction in seeing Elsa mature into womanhood, a role she was denied with her own daughter. The subsequent day, Jojo visits the Jungfolk headquarters where he observes Klenzendorf and Finkel engaged in a tense exchange with their noses nearly touching. Jojo reveals his intent to craft an expose on Jewish people, drawing laughter from the men who doubt its authenticity. Klenzendorf shares flamboyant uniform designs he has conceived for himself and Finkel and assigns Jojo the task of collecting scrap for the war effort. While dressed as a robot on the streets, Jojo witnesses his mother distributing anti-Nazi pamphlets and encounters Yorkie, who has become a soldier. Their conversation, where Yorkie nonchalantly mentions seeing a Jewish person in the forest, provokes Jojo's contemplation. Returning home, Jojo gifts Elsa with colored pencils he's found. However, he warns her about the illegality of a Nazi befriending a Jewish person. Elsa counters by noting that Jojo hasn't harmed her, asserting he's a lonely child searching for acceptance rather than a true Nazi. They arrive at an understanding despite their differences. Realizing her soiled state, Elsa is granted permission by Jojo to leave the room for a bath, even borrowing some of his late sister's clothes. Just before they're about to share dinner, a knock on the door interrupts their plans. Elsa hurries back to her hiding spot as Jojo opens the door to reveal Gestapo officers led by Hermann Dierz. Klenzendorf and Finkel also appear, claiming they had pamphlets for Jojo. The Gestapo commences a thorough search for suspicious activities, questioning Jojo about his mother's absence and his incomplete uniform. 
Elsa, now dressed as Inga, steps forward, asserting she took the knife from her brother due to his bothersome behavior. The Gestapo directs their attention to Elsa's room, where they continue their search. Dirtz remains suspicious, prompting him to demand Elsa's identification. Elsa presents Inga's ID from her drawer, and after guessing her birth date accurately, she's allowed to leave. However, Dirtz becomes intrigued upon spotting Jojo's expose book. Amid laughter from the Gestapo officers at the caricatures of Jewish people, Elsa feels hurt and betrayed, particularly when they encounter a section where Jojo outlines various hypothetical fates for Nathan. As the Gestapo and Klenzendorf depart, Elsa discovers that the date on the papers differs from what she had mentioned, implying Klenzendorf's clandestine assistance. Jojo points out that Inga's death isn't common knowledge, suggesting Elsa could adopt her identity and live with them inconspicuously. However, Elsa remains wounded by the content of the book and decides against pursuing their friendship further. Imaginary Hitler chastises Jojo for his attempts to befriend Elsa and his misguided perception of her character. While Jojo is out procuring food, he discovers Rosie's lifeless body hanging from a gallows in the public square. Overwhelmed by grief, he clings to her legs, weeping inconsolably and even attempting to tie her shoe. After hours of mourning, he returns home with his knife in hand, blaming Elsa for Rosie's demise and contemplating retribution. She halts his hand just in time, resulting in only a scratch. As he succumbs to tears once again, Elsa extends her compassion and offers solace. She reveals that she has always known Rosie's involvement in the resistance, although she lacks specific details. Jojo's father too is part of the resistance, although Rosie had told him otherwise to shield him from distress. Elsa admits that her parents were taken to a concentration camp, leaving only the two of them for support. Jojo commences a routine of scavenging food from waste bins on the streets, observing the city's daily deterioration. He and Elsa share meals and find solace in the fabricated letters from Nathan that Jojo crafts. One day, as chaos erupts in the city due to an offensive by the Allies following Hitler's demise, Jojo encounters Yorkie, who carries weaponry due to the army's desperate need for soldiers. Jojo confides in Yorkie about the Jewish person he's harboring and his concerns about the legality of their situation. Yorkie contends that the Russians and the Japanese are more fearsome than Jewish people. Their conversation is interrupted by Rom's appearance. After dispatching Yorkie with a firearm, she outfits Jojo with a uniform jacket to prevent him from being accidentally shot by their own side. Amid an explosion nearby, Jojo watches in dizziness as people, including children, elderly, and even Clem's Dorf and Finkel with their flamboyant attire, engage in combat. Overwhelmed by fear, Jojo seeks refuge in an abandoned building until the tumult subsides. Emerging afterward, he witnesses American forces replacing Nazi flags with their own, marking their triumph. Soviet soldiers apprehend any remaining Nazis, including Dirtz and the Gestapo members. Observing Jojo's uniform jacket, they detain him as well. Among the prisoners, Jojo encounters Klenzendorf, who imparts kind words and urges him to care for his sister. Klenzendorf then discards his jacket and insults Jojo, falsely labeling him a Jew to secure his release. Helpless, Jojo watches as Klenzendorf is led away and subsequently executed by a firing squad. On his journey home, Jojo encounters Yorkie, who mentions his intention to seek comfort from his mother. When Yorkie suggests that Jojo's girlfriend is now free, Jojo's spirits plummet at the thought of Elsa departing. He hurries back to the house, devising a plan to deceive Elsa by asserting that Germany emerged victorious in the war, preventing her from leaving. However, upon encountering drawings of his mother and a caged rabbit within his book, he abandons the ruse. Instead, he fabricates another letter from Nathan, proposing a scheme to smuggle Elsa out of the city. Elsa eventually discloses that Nathan succumbed to tuberculosis a year prior, though the letters had provided her solace. Jojo musters the courage to confess his romantic feelings for her, understanding her sentiments are purely fraternal. Despite this, he remains resolute in his determination to aid her escape, even as his imaginary Hitler voices his disapproval. Jojo finally defies his imaginary companion, firmly dismissing him by propelling him out of the house through the window. Elsa hesitates at the doorstep, but Jojo encourages her, motivating her to step outside. At that moment, a car adorned with the American flag passes by, prompting Elsa to slap Jojo for deceiving her. Uncertain of their next steps, they choose to commemorate their newfound freedom by dancing together. 